Welcome to my guest today is Lucinda. I am so excited to have you on our podcast today. Lucinda, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are? Hi, my name's Lucinda and I'm a my therapist, uh, a mum of two beautiful girls, an eight-year-old and a 13-year-old, and a wife to my wonderful husband, Jason. Beautiful. Mm. Uh, you run a business with a business partner at the moment I do. Uh, in Heidelberg. You want to tell us a bit about that? Yes, the, the clinic itself has been going since 2001. And I started working in 2013 at the clinic when it was in Heidelberg and I bought into it three years ago and we moved to Rosanna and fit out a lovely clinic, three, three rooms and, yeah, lovely open space. Beautiful. What got you into massage? Like where did you, where did you come from and yeah, what got you into massage? I first, uh, I've actually always been very tactile and ever since I can remember, I, I remember standing on my mum's back and massaging her when I had bony heels as a three to five year old. And yeah, my natural, my natural focus was touching people and connecting that way. And, um, and then decided to formalise the practice Ah. Uh, I'd say in 2000, year 2000, and, yeah, I've been adding qualifications to it ever since, and then it's led me into my therapy. So Beautiful. Lucinda, throughout your life and business, et cetera, I'm sure you would have experienced some challenges along the way. Um, do you want to maybe share wherever you would like to go with this, um, what you would like to share with us today? Um, a, a lot of my challenges have, have come through the workspace. I think de definitely developing uh, my own sense of who I am. Um, I've spent a lot of time supporting other people in, in business and, and then really decided to branch out into my own and work in partnership. So that was probably more, more recently that's, that's been the most profound because it's something I've been really conscious about all the way through ever since I met Marissa and then actually changing the whole culture of the business, um, setting up a whole system and, and then going into um, moving premises and, um, and then into lockdown, probably more recently, the challenging part of setting up a business and then closing. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about the business partnership. Yeah. What, what has sort of come up for you? Um, and obviously your business partner isn't here, so we're not going to speak on her behalf. Uh, but what has come up as a result of that for you? What have you bumped into or learned from or reflected upon in your time as a co-owner of, of an existing business? Um, I thought it would be a lot easier going into it than I thought, yeah. It really does pay, and I've chosen so well with um, with Marissa she's just incredible and yeah we've been able to grow a lot through the time I think learning to communicate and um, have fun work together um, use our skills to the best of our abilities um, working to our strengths and also challenging each other in in areas that we're not so skilled at. Is there anything else you wanted to speak to in relation to business partnership stuff? Yeah, mostly how we've come together yeah. so beautifully now, um, really connecting on our values and just loving that process now, having a lot of fun. Yeah, beautiful. And so what was, it lo what was lockdown like for you? So you guys are in Melbourne um, and you've got a team of people and you also decided to move premises mid-lockdowns between one of them. Uh, do you want to share a bit about what your journey into and out of COVID has been in, in your experience and in your world? Um, initially, 
when we went into the first lockdown, I, I wasn't connected with you guys at that time. Um, so it was a very different experience. What we were, or I was really scared, um, had, yeah, uncertainty. Um, we were go, 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 moving the clinic and then suddenly stop. So the initial aspect was um, being in shock and um, going, oh, okay, now I've stopped. What can I start to do? And I, I went online and um, actually looked at how I could try and pivot and, and set up telehealth for the my, my therapy aspect of, of what I do. Um, so did all those courses and, and then got really hooked into homeschool and really busy with that. But I still had that background panic of not knowing what to really do, what was happening. Um, yeah, so Marissa and I were just talking as much as we could and doing as much as we possibly knew at the time. And so it wasn't until after the second lockdown I um, I got connected with you guys and it was oh, such a relief. It was very, very good timing and, um, yeah, being able to put some plans in place and um, structure and... Um, knowing that there was a support system behind us and with us and we could start to work out how to um, amalgamate two very different people in business and then also helping to support staff and weekly meetings online and so really trying to keep a momentum going and on the other side um, still being present with how I was feeling which was partially a, an aspect of going through the different phases of grief because I'd stopped being able to do what I had been doing for years. And, yeah, that had its, its benefits and it also had challenges because there was one aspect where, you know, there is time to go through all that and a, a chance to work through what we needed to as much as we could in the business and, um, and learn a lot of skills and pick up on things that I'd ignored for years so yeah it was enormous time it's yeah. it's interesting isn't it how uh and I think I, like personally my belief is that everybody has had their own experience of COVID um mm. and that just because someone over there has had a massive experience and you know perhaps some listening may not have experienced as much I think our own experience is incredibly valid and we don't need to minimise it just because someone else has done, you know, insert what we think is better, worse, same, et cetera. What I, what I do think the people that I've noticed that are perhaps more centred or at, at ease with life are those that have allowed, have used the experience of COVID and being in lockdowns to actually reflect and contemplate which parts of life do I choose to keep, which parts of life are ready, am I done with, mm. all done, don't need it, don't want it, not interested, no longer serving me, mm. and which parts of my life do I actually want to bring in or create new for the future. Yeah. And there's almost like a sense of there was a coping mechanism or a coping strategy that, and I heard you share that through there, and I think you're certainly not alone in that, but I'll just do the do, you know, either over-function, under-function, consistently show up in my patterns to kind of mask a bunch of stuff I'm not willing to deal with. Mm -hmm. COVID happens. There are zero distractions, like zero, other than an enormous amount of homeschooling, there's zero distractions. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden now I get to navel gaze and I can't actually avoid that stuff anymore. What That's was that like for you bumping up into that at the start? It was really interesting um, because, yeah, I'm in the process of writing as well and leading up to lockdown, um, it was almost as if I wished a pause on life just to be able to catch up because I had started um, letting go of a lot of people that weren't of like heart and mind in my life and situations to, to clear out and free up 
so that I could focus on what's important. And it was incredible having done the do, do, do. Stopping was partly relief. So um, I actually had quite a big letdown um, emotionally and energetically. I, I needed to sleep a bit, quite a lot, and gave myself that time. And I realised that in stopping, all this creativity starts to rise And I never knew that. I always thought you had to keep pushing and doing and proving. And actually in being was just, whoa, it was confronting at the time. But as I'm getting more into it and and now out the other side of, what, seventh lockdown, I'm learning to, to be able to balance this whole other side of me that I never knew existed. I always knew myself as a a therapist and a, and a mum and a wife and a friend but all these all these connections are deeper I have more time to to listen and observe and feel and speak um, I miss so much I miss so much before and I'm so grateful for the opportunity now to see more of it and develop the skills to keep seeing and hearing and and feeling more of it Mm. yeah it's that our ability to sit in stillness and actually allow creativity to rise to the surface Mm. as you say as opposed to something that I have to you know strive for and constantly Mm. be busy about and it's like our busyness actually dispels, it's like our busyness dispels our focus and our energy. So mm. it's not actually as potent. Whereas when we can be still and just sit in sit in the messy, mm. you know, like actually just sit with our feelings and our thoughts and go, it, it's not good, it's not bad, it's simply just so. Mm. It is so powerful and you're right, it, it allows such a, a richness of life to be experienced Mm. that I think uh, not something I knew before COVID either. Mm. That it's like, what do you mean sit still? I don't understand. <laughs> Sorry, you're talking another language or something? Is that <laughs> not in my vocabulary? And just to actually sit in stillness and learn that it enhances and sharpens intuition mm. in yeah. such a vital way. Mm. It it's, does, yeah. It, it really does. Um, and I've worked incredibly intuitively all through my life. But this has taken me to a whole other level. Um, and not only that, but it's broadened. It's full, even down to, yeah, the connection with, with nature and, and everyone. Um, I knew it in my head, but just to be able to experience it in touch and, and feeling and anyone that I was in contact with over that time was just yeah it was quite magical so I'm really incredibly grateful for that time and found the extraordinary and simple things um, and really honoring that and um, really instilling that in my girls and my husband and I were just talking about that the other day that going out and we don't want to get back into that busy 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 you know let's be really conscious of you know everything is purposeful and meaningful and that we're adding value and heart and connection to our lives so yeah yeah it's a really magical time so beautiful Mm. I guess for you when you're in the chaos or you're in the struggle Mm. how do you find creative ways out of it like what what's your strategy for that for you I discovered a whole lot (laughs) um from initially distraction from sort of being clown like and jokey and dressing up and being yeah goofy to um to taking photos and writing and meditating yeah, the quiet music. Music was just incredibly calming through chaos. Um, I didn't ever see this time as an actual struggle. I saw it as a, a challenge to work out how to get through, how to move through. You know, some days felt really heavy. 
um, some felt lighter and, and going with it rather than um, fighting, yeah, or resisting it. I, I felt like, yeah, okay, this is, this is what the feel is for the day. Let's go with that. Still getting the practical things that need to get done, um, but honouring each step of the way, yeah. Yeah, and I think our ability to just go with the flow and adapt to the situations is what makes all the difference. Mm. Like it really does help make a big difference in terms of, um, yeah, just our how we're feeling at the other side. Mm. Like if we can just learn how to have that adaptability, I think it does make a really big difference to our overall well-being and our sense of fulfilment overall. Yeah. Yeah. I think definitely catching up online, having um, like Zoom dates, coffee dates and um, cooking together and chatting, um, yeah, with family and friends. Yeah, there's fun things. Um, drawing. Um, I, I got into diamond dots. I, I just love that as something where I could switch off and, and do, Yeah. Nice. nice. <laughs> so for you, what kind of agreements did you make for yourself or do you make for yourself if you find yourself in struggle, if you find yourself either back on the hamster or overwhelmed or you set the intention for the day and it doesn't quite go to plan or the intention isn't there and, you know, what what are some agreements that you make with yourself? Um, I always um, know that I'll get through just keep going no matter how long it takes that it's it's a chance for growth and a a new experience and expanding to give um self-care and and actually now um make myself a priority that's been the biggest change actually and to be able to focus on the little things the really the the simple daily acts of um gratitude yeah to focus on what is working rather than what isn't yeah and so self-care for you is that something you've always done or is it something you've really learned tell uh-huh. us a bit about what that what that's what, what learning that has meant for you learning it um has given me so much more energy time and the gift of actually showing that to my girls more yeah just being able to have more in my cup to to then be able to to share with the world um and it's much like having that space and time that stillness fills up and then yeah that creativity rises it's the same same thing with topping up the the cup so to speak with self-care um and that's what it's meant i don't see a time now where I'll burn out I it's yeah it's not an option and having things in place yeah even you know water each day you know waking up it's there um the the gratitude the meditation getting out and being active um the precious people in my life just the structure (laughs) each week which has been really important I did definitely didn't have that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of what 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 other kind of self-care practices do you have? Um yeah, getting massages, having um aromatherapy. Um I have my salt lamps with me and I go and do regular spiritual practices, get in meditation with uh, a group of women. Um, and we, yeah, we get together to meditate or channel and also, um, yeah, just be able to share with each other as well. Yeah. Eat well, time with family. Yeah. Beautiful. All of those things. They're all, yeah. And of course, yeah, the group now. Yeah. Well, I, I think there's sort of soul restorative practices. And I like I, I do love the idea of gratitude being a practice. It's not sort of something that we just go, oh yeah, I'm grateful for that. And by practicing it, it anchors it and creates more power, makes us more potent. 
Uh, and I think it also then makes our experience of all those other things more potent and more powerful as well. Um, wh- what are some things that you've learned about yourself over the last, let's say, 18 months or so? How many awesome people are actually in my life and being able to ask for help? Because I didn't. I, I wasn't. Um, I learnt um, being quite emotional um, as a as a person allowing it in and out um, and letting it flow Um, yeah big one was um, actually embracing being seen um, being vulnerable you know uncomfortable um, and that I'm I'm much braver than I thought and and a lot more creative than I thought I was that I can complete tasks (laughs) and even though um, I have an aspect of getting distracted easily, I can actually pull back in and, and focus as well. And that I had been really judgmental um, and I'm learning to uh, become really aware of that and make changes and that, yeah, that there was a lot of shame associated with that and learning to, to love myself in the process so um yeah so that was really important um yeah learning to have fun yeah (laughs) is that something you struggled with before recently I think I became really serious with um take you know helping to take over the business I am naturally light-hearted but yeah I was like oh you know I have to prove have to do this and and yeah learned that it's okay you can have fun too you can be jovial and there you know there's times to yeah yeah well, actually times to set boundaries which um I'm putting into place now which is really cool it's something that doesn't come naturally but yeah learning to have fun with that um the big the biggest thing is actually learning to listen really big there's so much I've missed from not <laughs> yeah yeah there's so much gold out there with people with yeah being out and about um but not just listening with the ears yeah the eyes and and listening with the body yeah yeah I'm still in process with all of this um so and I think we are like I don't think we get to a place like gosh now I'm you know completely open all the time and I know how to set a boundary and I know how to you know do unconditional love and it just kind of all happens like I think that's part of the human condition check you've got a pulse oh good must be human good to know um what one of the things that you said that I think a lot of business owners particularly face is a, a fear of being seen that was one of the challenges do you want to talk us a bit about what 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 was it like like what came out of that for you what came up for you as a result of that or how did it affect the business and then what was your journey out of then to be okay to be seen um it affected every aspect um I I didn't feel comfortable being an authority in the business at all or or feeling that I even you know I didn't feel like I was enough um and that yeah, that fear of being judged, that I would avoid trying other things in the first place, Um, you know, meeting new people and um, encouraging my staff to grow because I'm not challenging them, getting my face out there, uh, getting the voice out there and, you know, being able to have the hard conversations with Marissa and the staff and even, even my clients, you know, taking them to the next level. Uh, so many, so many things <laughs> and coming out of it. Yeah, that was a really massive, it was actually a real surprise. It hit me really quickly and it was um, very, very suddenly by your kind self and unbeknownst to you at the time, you you wanted a profile picture and, and I was like, and it was, yeah, when you were saying, oh, yeah, for any of those that have a fear of being seen or it was, yeah, are you ready to be seen or something like that? I was like, oh, boom, it hit me in the heart. And um, I did cry for many days and it was so good because, 
yeah, I, it was no longer valid anymore that it's okay. Um, I'm just here to be myself and that's great. Um, and I, I want my daughters to be themselves and, and you know, they see me as who I am, so does my husband and why am I not, you know. <laughs> so from that, yeah, a lot more confident got onto their Facebook lives and, yeah, posting on uh, socials, um, started having staff meetings, started having the difficult conversations, started setting boundaries, yeah, got used to being uncomfortable consciously. And the birds didn't fall out of the sky, the sun still no. came up the next day. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Like, what do you think, if you had to sort of think back to before you had your breakthrough, what was your greatest fear about putting yourself out there or being seen and being that leader? Um, being judged. And, and I realised that that's me judging myself. It's not anyone else because everyone else is busy doing their own thing, honestly. They're busy <laughs> doing their own judging, <laughs> <laughs> judging um, themselves. It was really stopping a flow of of creativity that I I didn't realize I, I kind of had in the back of my mind though through the years yeah I needed to deepen and and challenge um I just didn't know how or or what yeah yeah so it was just a really good way of practically going through it because there's yeah. a, just a whole process involved that just start, go with it. You're going to really suck. I think being being okay, really sucking at things. <laughs> and, um, yeah, dropping the the perfection, which I have no idea why. Well, it was, I know why it was there with, with you know self judgment, but it doesn't need to be there. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's just holding holding pattern. Yeah, it's just exhausting. It is. And, you know, there's so much energy that goes into trying to control things around us or people around us mm. that, and, and it's very easy to say this, you know, retrospectively, but on the other side of that, when we realise, okay, well, nobody is judging us as harshly as we judge ourselves. Yeah. You know, nobody judges us as harshly as we judge ourselves. And you go, okay, well, if I flip that to then go, what can I look at internally? And often as we start to unpack and, yeah, put in what we choose and what we don't and become more intentional about how we show up, often it flips that control is less about control and more just about setting great boundaries, having expectations, going with the flow because it's not so much about what everyone else is doing and more about what you're showing up or where you're showing up in your heart and how that is playing out in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you think is the greatest impact that you've had on the world because of the breakthroughs that you've experienced? I, I thought about this and I don't, not sure yet about the world at large. My, my world, my two girls, they firsthand, they saw me go into pools of um, tears and yeah all of all of that grief process and 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 to know that it's okay that you can come out the other end so they're okay with with how they feel they're okay and safe to express who they are um, that there is a path forward that you know, we can get creative and, and be inquisitive of how to work through that, um, that it's not all perfect, it's messy, it's uh, random, um, that, you know, there are also things that we can put in place, some structures to, okay, if we have a tendency to go downward, then, you know, how can we lift ourselves up um, and consistently do that? that every day and what what lifts us up what uh what boosts us um and my husband 
he it's it's really interesting because um he's very wise like a lot of the stuff that I've been looking at he's been telling me for years um and and very gently and respectfully but he just held space he was so beautiful and just went yeah go with it you know it's all it's all good so and I think in turn me going through that process helped spur him on um to think of what's possible um you know he picked up a guitar again which he hadn't for a very long time and and I've had some really interesting conversations with friends and yeah co-workers and um yeah yeah business partner and um clients that going through this process and and being able to hold space for other people now and in the future um it just gives people a a base of it's possible Mm -hmm. and yeah they can yeah they can do it um i i've seen some people do live since that never thought they would or um post things yeah from hiding um and yeah i mean one of my absolute best friends we've had we have the most incredible conversations um actively what we've been going through and the depth of how we've been feeling and yeah the gift of sharing that and yeah we've just been learning a lot from each other and people that I've I've known that have been struggling through the years um, have contacted me from, yeah, from me being really open and honest about where I've been at. Yeah, they thought, oh, you know, I I thought you were, you know, had it all sorted and stuff. I said no. (laughs) Um, And it's given them an avenue that, oh, okay, it's, it's all right, we're all on a, you know level playing field and um you know I've, I've said to them that they've been the gift in in helping me work through stuff so that's yeah it's it's the immediate world yeah. and who who then shares that the ripple effect, effect that we have, we have. yeah mm. and I think that being a role model for our daughters being a role model for our children I think you know, I could hand, count on one hand the amount of times I think I saw my mum cry and every time it was deeply overwhelming, I was super worried about her. I was like, mum, don't cry, what's wrong? And I think when our children can see us cry, can see us wobble, can see us apologise when we've made a mistake uh, and just see that we're real and being authentic, mm. I think that's incredibly powerful. Um and, and I think that there's always going to be stuff that we do that, you know, they're probably going to perceive as wrong. As, as one of my beautiful mentors said, they're probably going to be in therapy over something. They might as well pick that. Yeah. And I think that if we have the ability to, to just be authentic and show them that, yeah, you know what, you can go down into the pit of despair and you can also come out of the pit of despair in a really different and beautiful and unique, fulfilling way. And what you learn in there is the gold. Yeah. I think that that has deeply profound rippling impacts because I'm as a as a because also as a parent who is also very intentional with the way that we show up. I'm looking forward to how this plays out in high school, and I really trust that the skills that I've instilled and modelled, or that we're modelling to our kids, particularly mm-hmm. to our girls, that they can then model that to their friends when their friends are wobbly as heck and got stuff going on that they're actually going to have a skill set and a tool set that they didn't even realize that they had that yeah. they've learned they've learned by modeling to go actually you don't have to stay there you know it's okay to go there and I'll hold the space for you and let's just keep walking through because you don't have to live there and I I can imagine that although as you say it's it feels like it's just your world just your world the <laughs> rippling <laughs> the rippling impact that this will have on your community and on your world Mm. as more and more people understand and have the capacity to sit with their own stuff, I think that is what makes us incredibly powerful Mm. and incredibly influential in this world. Absolutely. Not not ignoring it and uh, sticking with it. And then the the best thing is to, to be able to show up 
regardless of bits hanging out of the eyes or nose, you know. <laughs> So good. <laughs> Wobbly bits and all. <laughs> and ugly yeah. snotty cries. Yeah. yeah. Show up all of it. The good all of that good stuff. <laughs> I love it. Lucinda, thank you so much for sharing your heart. Thank you for your time yeah. today. I trust this beautiful story will have a beautiful impact on those that are listening. So thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Mm-hmm.